my name is Dr. Lori Warren. I am a minimally invasive gynecologic surgeon, and I've been in practice since 1991 with Women First of Louisville. I attended University of Kentucky for my medical school, and then completed my OBGYN residency program at Tufts University. In addition to my private practice, I'm an assistant clinical professor and the co-director of the Minimally Invasive Gynecologic Surgical Fellowship Program at the University of Louisville. I founded Pass the Pearls, a nonprofit organization which is dedicated to promoting education about women's health care and to improve access to minimally invasive surgery. What does minimally invasive surgery mean? Minimally invasive surgery for women refers to the types of surgery that are performed without a relatively large abdominal incision. Minimally invasive surgery can be accomplished with either a vaginal surgery or small abdominal incisions that would include either a laparoscopic or robotic assisted techniques. The difference between one of the minimally invasive surgeries and the traditional abdominal surgery is less time in the hospital with less pain and a quicker recovery. How is laparoscopic hysterectomy different from other hysterectomy types? Laparoscopic surgery requires small incisions as opposed to a large abdominal or open incision. A camera is used in one of the small openings with laparoscopic instruments used through the additional ports in order to accomplish the surgery. The surgeon is at the surgical table and controls the instruments with his or her hands. Vaginal surgery is performed by an incision made in the vagina without the need for an abdominal opening. Robotic assisted surgery is another way to accomplish laparoscopic surgery with small incisions for ports that are attached to the robotic arms and controlled by the surgeon. What is a supracervical hysterectomy? What are the advantages and disadvantages? A supracervical hysterectomy is the removal of the uterus above the level of the cervix. This type of hysterectomy leaves the cervix in place, which is located at the top of the vagina. There's a faster recovery time to a supracervical hysterectomy because there are no stitches that are needed to heal at the top of the vagina. I allow my patients to return to all normal activities in just two weeks after a supracervical hysterectomy. If the reason for the hysterectomy is due to problems with the uterus and not the cervix, then this type of procedure may be considered. The disadvantage to leaving the cervix are that pap smears are still required to screen for cervical cancer, and a small percentage of women may have cyclic bleeding after a supracervical hysterectomy. What questions should I ask the surgeon to determine if they are the best surgeon for me? Ask the surgeon these questions. Can my surgery be done minimally invasively? If the doctor says no, then ask, do you know a surgeon who would be able to offer a less invasive surgical approach for me? What percentage of your surgeries are you able to do minimally invasively? I would prefer a doctor who performs minimally invasive surgery at least 80% of the time, which includes either vaginal, laparoscopic, or robotic assisted. What is your success rate, and on average, how many of these surgeries do you perform? I would want a surgeon who performs minimally invasive surgery week in and week out, and I would want their conversion rate from a minimally invasive approach to abdominal to be less than 5%. How often do you have complications, and what type of complications are possible at the time of surgery? The risk of a major complication should be less than 1%. There are risks from any type of hysterectomy, which include damage to other structures, such as the bladder, the bowel, the ureters, which drain the kidneys, and, and blood vessels. With a skilled surgeon, however, these risks should be very low. By asking these questions, you will be able to determine the best surgeon for your surgery, and it may require seeking a second opinion.